everyone, it's Lauren here. Thanks for stopping by my channel and checking out my latest process video for the Hip Kit Club. Now, I stuffed up. I stuffed up big time for this one. I was challenged by the team to do a sketch challenge with a recipe. Now, I completely forgot about the sketch part. And here it is. Beautiful Ashley Horton designed the sketch. I completely forgot about that and went straight into recipe mode. So I'm super sorry, Ashley. Your sketch looks a lot of fun. And, you know, if you guys watching this now want to pause that video and have a great look at that sketch, you can be a part of our sketch challenge that happens in our Facebook group and you get a chance to win a voucher. Um, but don't don't have a look at this for the sketch side of things. Have a look at it for the recipe side of things. So the recipe is I've got to have a sprinkle of flowers, a dash of hearts, a splattering of charms and flavour with a smidge of acetate. Now, I worked hard on the recipe, so I know that I've aced that bit for you, but I completely forgot about the sketch part. But hopefully Ashley will forgive me <laughs> and this I hope this layout inspires you to pull out your mixed media, have fun with this recipe and, um, you know, create a layout that is beautiful for your albums and your family to delight in. So as you can see, I'd already prepped my background with using the stencil. And the reason why I did that was because I was working at night and I knew that I, when I was creating this layout, I'd, ha I'd only have a limited amount of time to do it. So I prepped the, uh, the paper with the, with the, um, the beautiful, beautiful stencil designed exclusively for the Hip Kit Club by Paige Evans. So I prepped that the night before and I just used the modelling paste that came in the colour kit a couple of months ago. And that's an opaque uh, modelling paste. And so I was really mindful of that and I, because I really wanted the white to really stand out. So what I did was I added some white acrylic paint into the modelling paste and then applied it through the stencil. And that meant that my whites were really white and I would get that really clear definition. Over on the side where my, um, I'm, I'm not very good at when I'm doing voiceovers, working out my left and right side, but the side where the paintbrush is, <laughs> I wanted the stencil to run down the side of the page a little. So that last little cluster is done with the opaque matte uh, modelling paste without any acrylic and you can see the difference there it's not as sharp it's almost blended in when I've added the magicals on the top there so just remember if you're wanting a really crisp white or a particular coloured um, effect to come through with your stenciling add some acrylic paint to your modelling paste and that will ensure that colour is just the way you want it. Um, I'm just here adding some watered down white acrylic splatters just on there and I had a real fun time just playing with the magicals. The colours I've used are Tilt A Wheel Teal and Pink Ladies Pink and when they were blended together came up with that sort of purplish tinge there. The Tilt A Wheel Teal was as you saw when I put it on the pigment was really really strong so I dabbed that off because I wanted it to be softer but the Pink Ladies Pink I didn't have to do that. I actually had to really work that colour to get more more vibrancy out of it. So just be mindful I guess when you're playing with these really cute little powders that when you're having a look at them you can't even really see the pigment in there um, that you, it's probably a good idea to test on a piece of paper uh, so you know the true colour that you're going to get before putting it onto your layout. Now, I was having a little play here. As you can see, I've done a complete photo swap. The, um, the photo that I was originally going to use is of my little girl. It's a coloured photo and she was in her tutu, which was navy and hot pink. But that teal came out and I just thought it just didn't match that navy the way I, I wanted it to. So I thought I'm going to stick with black and white, which will make the colours really pop and not take away from the photo. And um, I pulled out another photo of my daughter and... Um, 
myself backstage before she was about to go on and do her classical ballet solo for the local Deadford here. Um, and I just, yeah, I think the backstage stuff, if you're a dance mum, the backstage stuff is so fun. Um, seeing all these wonderful smiling faces giggling around backstage and they're just so excited to get up there and dance. Um, it's it's a lovely, lovely environment to be in. One I never thought I'd be in. I always thought I'd be sort of a netball mum, but I've turned out to be a dance mum and I'm trying my best to sort of fit into that world. And, and um, But these little moments that I have with my daughter and I'm mindful of taking photos of myself with her just so that she always knows I was there with her in years to come. So as you can see, I've just wanted to create a little bit more texture on the background there. And I've done that by just getting some white tissue paper, putting some strips of double-sided tape down and ruffling that tissue paper as I go. Just three lines there. I just wanted to help uh, run that uh, mixed media down, add some different texture and and just sort of add a bit of an interest um, that's a, not not a, not normal for, you know, I'm always looking for something that might look a little different or might look, um, you know, just, I don't know, I just like playing with things and I don't even know why the tissue paper jumped into my head. I actually had to sort of dig around and find some, so, um, but I just felt like I just wanted to add some more texture and those soft ruffles, I guess the tutu feel, um, those ruffles just sort of you make it all a bit more girly and pretty and and yeah, so I cover a lot of it up as you'll soon see, but it's there, I know it's there and I certainly enjoyed the process. So here I am, I am working on my sprinkle of flowers in this bit. So this is part of the recipe and so I'm just having a look through all those beautiful Paige Evans Horizon florals and the ephemera packs that came in uh, April's kits. So I got all the kits this month. So I've got the embellishment kit, the main kit, the project life kit, um, the color kit and the main kit. So I've I got all of those. So I've got lots of goodies to play with there. And I really love these little two by two patterned, like these little cardstock books. These were perfect because what I wanted to do was sort of carry the embellishments across that page and sort of just define where the stencil stops and the sort of the plain um, bottom half uh, sort of comes in. So, and I wanted to make sure that I was bringing um, the colours of those flower clusters through the layout as well. So just having, cutting these up into different size strips and sort of um, weaving them across the page has just sort of defined that section and made that cluster uh you know, really pop and and give lots of um, depth and prettiness to the layout there. So they were perfect. Um, we've had those little books in the past and I've never gotten around to using it, but I always thought I'd create a grid style layout using those little books. But I'm going to, I'm just, I'm just thought, I'm just going to give it a go on this layout, see where we go. <laughs> so another, that little heart that I just fussy cut, that was out of that little two by two inch book. And so having a look for things that you can cut out and make extra embellishments is always a good tip to do there. So how are you guys traveling? Uh, are you, do you love participating in sketch challenges, recipe challenges? Does that motivate you to get into your scrapbooking studio and, you know, have, have fun? Or if you, you know, do you like participating in them, but not like sharing them with others? Like, do you like sharing all your creations on social media and in the groups? I know that uh, for some people, it's, um, it's scrapbooking a really private thing it's a you're documenting personal memories and um and, and you don't want to share them with other people and others love to share what they've made as they as it's a really creative outlet for them um so what what do you tell me in the comments below um do you like sharing your work where are safe places for you to share your work where do you like to um share and do you like participating in challenges where you get to uh win a little win a little prize to do a little shopping or you know just um participate in the challenge just for the fun of being challenged um i'd really love i'd really love to hear your thoughts so let me know 
So as you can see, I've just pulled out all those embellishments and I'm just sort of sitting them around. Okay, here's another little bit. I just put a little puffy heart there and there's another little couple of puffy hearts there. So that's ticking me off with a dash of hearts, part of the recipe. Dash of hearts. I thought those three cute little layered, well, they're, uh, well, they're not puffy, sorry, they're cardstock with foam on the back. Um, and here I am. Another part of the recipe was a splattering of charms. Now, I don't know if I quite got the splattering. I did end up using two charms on this layout. Does two qualify as a splatter? I'm, I'm not too sure, but I was splattering some other stuff. I was splattering with mixed media. So I've got the charms on there. I'm not sure if it qualifies as a splatter. I did was, I'll see you watch me. I'm trying to put that third on because I, I tend to work in threes and I'm thinking if I can get a third one on there, I've aced the splattering, but doesn't happen. Just doesn't doesn't work for me. Here's another heart to finishing off the dash of hearts. So I've ticked off the sprinkle of flowers, the dash of hearts, the splattering of charms, and now I need a smidge of acetate just to finish that off, which is coming up right now. These alphabet uh, acetate pieces are really cute. They are exclusive. They are designed by the amazing Kim Watson, who does all the exclusive uh, products for the Hip Kit Club. And this little pack of happiness, although it's a little bit tricky to kind of filter through there, um, has heaps and heaps of letters in there, plenty to make titles and words. So I just came up with fun as my part of my title. And I the reason why I only well, a smidge, a smidge is only small, I think. What do you think? Do you think a smidge is small? So only one of the smidge of acetates, I've ticked that box as well there. So I'm acing the recipe challenge, just completely bombed out on the sketch part of the whole deal. <laughs> so um yeah, so I'm just going to add some more texty words here with some beautiful puffy uh, stickers from that are exclusive from uh, more exclusives from the Hip Kit Club, and I just love it. It says, "You did it. I love your smile." So I couldn't that couldn't be more perfect for uh, what we what what this photo is about and what this memory is about. So I'm just here now, finishing off, adding little bits and pieces everywhere. Those layered embellishments. Um, were stunning that camera and that beautiful beautiful pendant there I thought that is absolutely perfect for this because she is my prize winner um, in so many aspects of her life she surprises me and you know so I thought she deserves a beautiful pendant there and um, now I'm just going to finish off with some journaling um yeah, so just black pen, some lines, some dashes, a really thin tip, and there you have it. So I hope you like my layout. I hope if you haven't heard of the Hip Kit Club or are on the fence about subscribing, that this layout's inspired you to go over and have a check it out and have another look at it. I also hope it has inspired you to try a recipe challenge this time. Also stop by the Facebook group and be a part of all the sketch challenge activities and um, I'll try better next time. I have. All right, guys, take care. Keep scrapping. Bye. Bye.